Good day, Alpha Womanpreneurs, or should I say, good evening. It's evening where I am. For some of you all, it may be uh, earlier in the day. I am coming to you with the story of Coin Coin. This is one woman who truly made the best of a bad situation. The place, Louisiana, the time, the mid 1700s, a few years after the French had secretly given this land to Spain and then secretly gotten back about 50 years before the historic purchase that bears its name in which the United States brought this territory from France along with the makers of what would become 12 new states. And land was the only thing changing hands in those days. Her baptismal name was Marie Therese but the name this enslaved Uwe woman preferred to be called was Coin Coin, which means second daughter, as she would make history as one incredible businesswoman and mother. It began when in her mid twenties and already the mother of five, she was rented out as a housekeeper to the merchant Claude Thomas Pierre Metier. Metier. Coin Coin kept more than his house. All in all, she would bear him 10 children. After 20 years of service, Metier brought Coin Coin and freed her along with their newborn. As for the six children he had already sired, he freed two in a few years. The other four remained slaves. The three children Coin Coin had with Claude after she'd been freed were, of course, free at birth. In 1786, Claude Metier left his common-law wife to take a white legitimate bride. His settlement with coin coin comprised a bit of land and annuity of 120 piasters, the early day peso. On her homestead in Red River Valley, Coin Coin raised tobacco, indigo, cattle, and turkeys. In 1794, she increased her holdings with a land grant from Spain for about 640 acres, out of which she raised up a cattle ranch. And Coin Coin prospered, and Coin Coin saved her money for her children. Between the late 1780s and the mid 1790s, Coin Coin traveled to as close by as Opelos, Louisiana, to as far away as Natchitoches, Texas, to rescue her children and grandchildren from slavery. For the more than dozen children and adults she managed to find and purchase. The sale prices ranged from a few hundred dollars to 700 and more. At age 60, Coin Coin made a deal with her ex, Claude Metoyer. She traded her annuity for the freedom of her four children he still owned. When she died, Coin Coin left her family quite in a state. Though various assessments exist, Carter G. Woodson, the father of Black history, maintained that Coin Coin's holdings included more than 2,000 acres and 50 slaves. Indeed, she was a woman of her times. They say that she and her descendants were kinder, gentler slaveholders. We hope so, because it would be a damn shame if these people were cruel taskmasters instead. What Coin Coin built was greatly multiplied by her children and grandchildren. They amassed some 20,000 acres on which in addition to cash and keep crops were a dozen man manor houses, a school, a church, and other buildings, and about 500 slaves. The Metiers were the richest black family in pre-Civil War America. 
the only parcel of coin coins legacy that survived intact into the 20th century was the yucca plantation later melrose plantation where clementine hunter the black grandma moses was in service when she was inspired into an artistic life And that is the story of Corn Corn. She was born August the 24th, 1742, and died in 1816.